Hi everyone, it's Darla from Drab to Fab and I have a studio in Winchester, Indiana and I am a Dixie Bell retailer and I am upstairs right now in the apartments. We rent in a, it's a huge building, huge old building and I have been doing little mini makeovers in the kitchens upstairs in the apartments and the last one I did, a lot of people had some questions, so look behind me. I got my lights, I'm all set up, and I want to take you along step by step. Let me see if I can turn this around here. Can I? Let me turn this around. Nope, I can't. Okay, I wanted to turn this around here and show you guys the kitchen that I'm going to be working in. And I have pictures on my Drab to Fab Facebook page of the other kitchen that I did. And I did drop cloth, I did white, so I wanted to do something different. So here's um, some countertops, cabinets, and I'm gonna be painting them in that backsplash. In the other apartment, I did the backsplash with just some Dixie Belle paint and a stencil. Let me see if I can back up here in a corner. This is a small kitchen. But this is a very old kitchen. Look at the old paneling in here. I'm not going to paint that, but I am going to tackle this and give it a whole new fresh look. And look, I got Dash here to help me today. It is a mess. I got paint everywhere. But what I did so far is I cleaned it with the white lightning. And then I will use the slick stick on the countertops when I'm ready to tackle those but first I'm going to start painting with the sea glass so I'm going to show you how simple and, and easy it is to do with that so let me get started okay let's get started I have my sea glass here which is like um it's similar to the vintage duck egg I think it will look pretty in here and it is a chalk mineral paint so it's going to dry really quick that's how I'm able to get these kitchen makeovers done so quickly but I'm going to open it up and I'm going to pour it on a plate here and then I'm going to dip my brush in some water so I'm going to start off with I'm working by myself usually I have my husband here helping me so I'm helpless <laughs> I'm going to put this in a sink and grab my favorite brush over here the cling on, bam, this really holds a lot of paint. And then I forgot my little mister and I don't wanna walk all the way downstairs, I'm too lazy. So I'm just gonna be dipping my brush in the water to get it a little wet. I want my brush damp and then load my brush up and here we go. Let's think how pretty these are gonna be. I'm excited. I did get pictures, didn't I? I wanna make sure I got some pictures. Let me bring you guys a little bit closer so you could see how it goes on. In the first layer, you want to do a nice thin coat. So I'm going to put it on a nice thin coat. And if you hear something in the background, I brought little Dash up here, my French Bulldog. So he's up here helping me. Like I said, I clean these first with Slick Stick and then um not slick stick duh i was testing you guys white lightning i cleaned them with white lightning first and that just gets all the dirt and grime off and then um i rinsed them off after the white lightning and now i'm just putting a coat of paint down what do you guys think about this color isn't it pretty i wish i could have went live but up here upstairs in this building um, we didn't really have a strong enough Wi-Fi, so we was a little worried that it wouldn't, you know, it would cut in and out and be blurry, and I wanted you guys to see this. I did one yesterday and had a lot of questions, so I told everybody I was doing another makeover, and I would just record the whole thing. I'm not tall enough, so, <laughs> and you know what? I'm not even going to get the insides. I'm just going to do this because somebody is moving in this weekend, so I wanna get this kitchen transformed <laughs> in a day. Actually, I'll finish it tomorrow. So, bam, one done just about. 
Now, some people take the hardware off. I don't. I just paint over it, as you can see. And this paint is going to, let me try to get my head out of your way. This paint's going to dry super fast, so. And I did paint the edges of this in the other kitchen. And I was so happy with how the other kitchen turned out. It was so cute. It was a big transformation. Now, this one, I noticed, has, um... This backsplash, as you can see, Ugh, I don't even know. That's a disaster. I might have to peel some of that off. I don't know what's going on there, but like I said, this kitchen is a old, old, old kitchen. So let me get the inside of the door. And right now, I'm still just using the lid here. So look how much already paint I didn't use very much at all. Like I said, a nice thin coat. Nice thin coat, and it's going to dry fast. And I can already hear down there my little victim, Dash, lost his duck. Let me back you up a little bit, and I will tackle this one next. So I'm just going to load my brush up. It still feels pretty wet, not much paint. And start putting it on. Nice thin coat.
and bam, bam, done with that. So let's go back up here and check this out and seal. I can already see that it's dry. So let me take you guys back over here. There we go. There we go. Okay. Feel that? Feel that. Of course you can. Hear that? <laughs> dry. Bam. Okay, let's get another coat on. My brush was pretty wet, but I'm just going to dip it in my water here. Like I said, a lot of times I use a, a mist or I have a, a little, a little, um, you know, what's this to get it wet? What is that called? Why can't I think? Spray bottle. Duh, spray bottle. But look, you guys, see how that second coat is going on and full coverage? Isn't that awesome sauce? Look at this. I'm so excited. Put down here. Like I said, usually someone wouldn't go this fast, but I wanted to show you guys the whole process of painting a mini kitchen.
right there. Okay. Bring it back up. And ta-da. What do you guys think? It's looking good, isn't it? So the next thing I'm going to do is, took me 45 minutes. It says 45 minutes right now. So there's a little touch-ups that I could still see, like maybe right here a little bit. You know, when this is really, really dry, I'll see a few little touch-ups that I'll have to touch up on. But basically, I'll let it dry and tomorrow I would put a clear coat on. But right now, I am going to clean out some brushes, clean up my mess, and then we're going to start with slick stick. We're going to put slick stick on these countertops, and you're going to watch how they transform. I'm excited about that. Check out how these look. It doesn't, don't they look, doesn't they? That's not a word. <laughs> don't they look nice? I got two coats on. I did a little bit of touch-ups, and I came over here and painted. But first, I want to show you how you would do your countertops. So the first step is your slick stick, and Dash's play date is here, so you guys might hear some rumbling there in the background, huh? <laughs> yeah. And I got my partner back, so he's back to help me record this, so I'm not alone anymore. So I'm just going to put a coat, a thin coat of slick stick on, and this is... Dixie Bell Slick Stick, and what this is going to do is it's good for shiny surfaces. So, where the paint doesn't stick very well, especially countertop, and this is going to help the paint adhere to the countertop. So, I'm going to put this on first, a thin coat, and let it dry. And I don't know if you got up there close to show them the outdated. Um, Sorry about that. <laughs> Dash is having a ball with his playmate. There's another French Bulldog here. So Dash is in heaven right now. I did this one earlier and it's got two coats of the slick stick on. So then first step was the white lightning, cleaned it, and then slick stick, wait an hour, depending on the weather, it's kind of humid here, or two hours if necessary. And then the next day after you the slick stick is dry, then you're ready for the third step, which I am going to put on the Yankee Blue just because I think it might complement some other activity that's going to be going on in this backsplash. So, let me show you. I had a paper plate. Here it is. I always like to pour my paint on a paper plate just so I don't contaminate by double dipping. <laughs> okay. And I have my brush a little bit damp. And I'll start putting on a coat. And then I'm going to start sponging on the colors. And I want to do the same, a nice thin layer 
and it will dry. And actually, I won't put two coats on, and you'll see why. I don't have to worry about this covering so much. And again, if I wasn't hurrying to show you guys these stages, I would have taped this off. But the backsplash, as you can see, it needs some work. And I'll show you what the other one that we did and how you could use Dixie Bell paint and a stencil and what you could do to a backsplash too if you want to. Okay. And I think a roller, somebody asked. And yes, you could use a roller. And if you did use a, a roller, I would suggest one of those sponge rollers to roll on this, but it doesn't really take me long because I'm using the Klingon brushes and they hold a lot of paint. knife see that we could we could camouflage that we're going to hide that so next what you'll need is a sea sponge you could get this at walmart or hobby lobby anywhere i think walmart has them i think i got mine at hobby lobby or lowe's and then what i did was here's the paints i used i used in the navy savannah mist and burlap and i i might add a black i don't know we'll just see how it looks you just kind of play around with it and what i did was i put my paints on a paper plate where should i put those i need another table don't i i'll just set them there okay and then i got these a little damp and they're just a little damp. They're not real wet. And it helps the paint stick to them. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do next. I'm going to load my sponge up. Wipe it off like that. You don't want it dripping on there. And then... Yeah, I shouldn't probably put those there if I can move them out of the way. Because look, I got little rings there. I might want to flatten those out. And I'm not, I don't have to wait for this to dry because it's going to help the paint stick when it's a little wet. It have been too wet with my brush. Okay, so now all I do is just sponge it on like this. And what you don't want to do is make a pattern. You don't want to go like this and make a pattern. You kind of want to just keep turning your sponge different ways. So it doesn't look like a pattern. So you just keep sponging on your first color. Let's see. If I had a paper towel, you could blot it off on a paper towel. But I don't know if they can see how that's going on. I'm just pouncing like straight down. I had a friend helping me the other day and, and she was kind of smearing it. So she finally got the hang of just straight down and pouncing. Oh, our light just went off. So we'll turn the light on and <laughs> come back on. The dog's probably our helpers. off. Oh, no, we're back. Did we shut off? No. No, we're still there. Okay. I bet they need a drink of water, huh? Oh, hi. Hey. Maybe we'll shut it off for a second. Or we can cut that out. Yeah, we can cut that out. Because what's happening is my paint is really too wet too wet yeah and it, 
Yeah, so pounce. Pounce straight up and down. Keep moving your wrist too. Pouncy, pouncy. Yeah. Bounce like a bunny. As long as it's not a pattern or you're dragging. And actually, if you do mess up, it's okay because then you get your original color, which we used the Yankee Blue, and you just um, pounce on top of it because I've messed up a few times. And you just get the Yankee Blue and kind of go over it. It's fun. It's fun and it saves money to do it yourself. DIY. And plus, if you're like me, and you get bored with something, Dixie Bell paint, you could paint over it. Well, probably, yeah, you could paint over your countertops, sand them a little bit. If you've got, like, tons of, what did we put on ours? We didn't put gator hide, which you can, and that's what I'm going to put on here. But I wanted them to look more... Glossy. Very glossy. So we went with... Uh, Two-part epoxy. So you could put epoxy on top of these, and then I really like the way that looked also. But if you don't want to, then you could just... Um, what I'm going to do to these is just gator hide. And I'll use my blue sponge, and I'll show you guys how to do that too. I'll do that step next and we'll go over to the other apartment and I'll show you that step because I did those. They've been done for a couple days or at least 24 hours that I could go ahead and put the gator hide on just to finish this kitchen makeover and show you the last step that you would do to the countertops. And then I could show you if you wanted to stain these how you do it and we'll walk over across the hall to the other kitchen and I'll show you really quickly how to do that as well that way you'll have all the steps so I'm trying to pounce fast so we'll, we'll probably fast forward this huh when we get yeah. it really wet back there. Yeah, this would be a good time to fast forward. I'm going to try and avoid this part. Yeah, we'll walk I bet your here. back is, backsplash is dry. Okay, so to do the backsplash, like down there in that corner there, you could maybe, let me rinse my brush out, a couple different ways. You could tear a little piece off to get down in there, or take another paintbrush and kind of pounce in here, in that corner. Try to do it different ways. But, yeah, that corner is a little tricky, so take a little piece off your sponge and go down into the corner like that. You just got to play around with it. How's that looking? Looking pretty good. Trying to stay out of the way. And as you can see, that much paint, what I poured on here, it doesn't take very much at all. And I'm getting ready to do the next collar. I'm trying to stay over on this side so you guys could see and I'm not standing in the way. Down in that corner, push it. Okay. And then what I do is with the same sponge, 
I'm gonna grab. Oops, where did I put my colors? I'm You're over here. My other colors. And sometimes when you use the same color on there, they mix together and make their own color. That's why I'm not gonna rinse this off. But maybe after this color, I'll rinse it off before I go to the next one. But let's see how adding this, what color did I say this one was? This one was the... The sea glass? Savannah Mist. Mm. So I'm adding the Savannah Mist in it now. I don't know, do I want a darker color in here? What do you think? I don't know if you could go um, a little closer down here, zoom it in a little bit more so they could start seeing how the second color is starting to change it. And I'm just going to pounce with this color, just wherever you feel like it. You can't mess it up and there will be no two the same. <laughs> And then sometimes I notice in granite, it's those like pieces like that, or what the stone's cut, the way it's cut, it's like closer together in some spots. And then at home, I even added a little glitter in ours because they have a little sparkle to them. But I transformed our whole kitchen at home with just paint and I did our stove and refrigerator. I did it with the Dixie Belle patina and made it look steampunk. I went with the steampunk theme. And I have pictures on our Facebook page of that also. And I think I'll go live with Dixie Belle and do our little mini refrigerator and show them how to do that. Okay, so I don't have the next color. See, I went a little hard there. How's it look from there? Does it look okay? Yeah. If not, oops. I have something there. I don't know if it was a brush or... Okay. Okay, so now let's go. It's still pretty wet there because I got my brush too wet right there. Let's see, now I'll go with my next color. Do you know where it is? Done it. So now I'm going to sponge in the navy. In the navy, this is the darker color. I don't know if I want to rinse this off. Let's see. See the color that's making a little bit of a different color here? But then when I rinse my sponge, it's gonna make the in the navy a little bit darker. Oh, it's kinda of like this. What do you think? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't know whoops if I wanted a dark dark or a white. Like I said, you just play around. Do I want a white? I want to see what that's going to look like. So I'm just going to put a little white here and take my, I think I'm still going. Nope. It looked like it was. Oh, yeah, I guess it is. And <laughs> I thought, well, we'll just edit all that because I walked up and, okay. So I got my white here. Just, I just want to try some white because I'm not sure if I'm liking this or not. So this is what's fun about it. You just keep playing around until you like it. So, oh yeah, I think I do. What do you think back there, camera guy? I, I think uh, I do like the white. Yeah, I like it lighter. You know, with this blue. So you just keep playing around and adding some more colors. But this is starting to look like a normal updated countertop and then show them again this one swing the camera over there and show them again the difference that this is making in case it left their mind and their their memory of the big transformation in no time the longest part was the 
slick stick drawing. Yep, I think I do like that white. Get it back here on the backsplash. And I... And then again, let me see if I could squeeze this like that and try to get down in here in the cracks. Try not to make a pattern to get down in there. Just dot counts. Pounce, 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 and it's fun. My friend helped me in the one across the hall last night, and it motivated her so much that she just called a little bit ago and asked, we're in a small community, if on our way home she would drop off the supplies. <laughs> so she is going to be working on a desk, kind of doing the same technique, I believe, isn't she? She just pulled them out of the So she helped me, and we was trying to hurry up and do that last night. So I had my friend here, and she was doing one side, and I was doing the other. And we got it done really quickly with both of us pouncing. And she was just having a ball doing this. And now she is... This was a little wet here. That's why I was waiting, but... It's still kind of wet so you can see when it's wet it just kind of makes it looks blurry in there but we'll just you can make it happen you just gotta be careful oh you know what those look like little dandelions don't they like yeah you know, like when you blow them and make a wish huh interesting that just gave me an idea for when we do our painting so let me switch colors again and I'll use this same sponge and pounce. Now I can lightly sand because you can see the paint is kind of heavier there. So before I put my gator hide on, if I want to, I can lightly sand it. So I think like these little longer lines so anyway you guys got the idea now oh. okay so we painted these yesterday and I showed you step by step and the next thing that you would want to do is a sand block and we have these on our Shopify store as well and it is a, what grit is this, would you say? It's a real fine. 220. 220, maybe. We'll check it out. But I like to sand it lightly because when you sand it, oh, just to feel that it's a nice, smooth, professional look after you sand it. I don't know if they could capture how that looks, but it just gives it a nice, smooth finish. So I'm going to sand this lightly. So pretty and this is such an easy thing to do so don't be intimidated just go for it and start painting Dixie Belle will help you step by step it's such an easy paint to use that you don't have to know what you're doing just watch the tutorial and if you have a retailer near you go in and ask questions or um, call me and then what I like to do after I sand it is just wipe it down So we want to wipe that down, get all the dust out, off with a rag, with a damp rag or dry rag or duster. And then also you could sand your countertop. Because some of the paint, you know, when I was pouncing it on, it went on a little thicker. So you could even give that a quick little sanding too before you put your gator hide on it. So then I'm going to use a clear satin finish. And there is clear satin and, wait, not clear, like a shiny satin and matte. So I'm going to give it a shake and 
I'm going to pour it in a little, little container like this. And then it's going to be the same concept of dipping in your blue sponge, which I can't live without this now. When I start waxing with this, this blue sponge really helps the streaks. But after you wax it, and if you did notice any streaks, you could always go over it lightly with your sanding block, just lightly. So it's the same thing. Just start and don't, re don't overwork it because the first coat you're going to put on a nice thin coat. Can you, can you see the difference in there of the how shiny that's starting to look? Yes. It's like hand lotion. It absorbs into the paint and it gives it a nice little shine, but not, not real shiny. Depends on what coat that you're using. So I could tell that I missed a little right there, but it's okay because the second coat, which I'm going to wait about an hour, the second coat, I'll be able to see where I missed and then I'll get it on the second coat. And then that way, when you go to wipe down your cabinets, um, they will be water resistant. So isn't that awesome? So I'm excited for everybody to start painting and give their, it's spring, spring is in the air. Give your countertops and cabinets a nice fresh look. So there's all of our steps and I'm going to finish this and then we'll put some pictures on here. Thank you guys for watching. And like I said, don't be scared. Just go for it and um, do it. You're on. Okay, you guys, I'm going to take the gator hide. Gator hide. And I'm going to put some on my paper plate. And I'm hurrying because the landlord is here showing. And as you see, I'm going to get most of it off. I just want a thin layer and I will start here. Well, actually I'll start back here and just swipe it back and forth. And as you can see, and probably can't see, the lighting's not that great here. I don't want to keep working the same spot over and over. Just kind of get the excess off back and forth. Nice thin coat. And then this is gonna dry in an hour, and then I'm gonna put two more coats on. And you don't want any more than three coats because it won't do you any good anyway. But this will be enough that it's gonna seal it, and then that way it will be water repellent. Protects your creations with a natural armor, so you will love the gator hide. But that's it, guys. And I'm gonna finish this. But stand back and show them this kitchen that we did. And then back here as well, because I used Dixie Belle in the Navy, and I used the um, drop cloth and just stenciled back here. So I will also take my gator hide, dip it in. Not much on the blue sponge. I love these. And I'll go back here as well. Because water is, if you wash dishes like me, you will be messy. <laughs> so I'm just going to put Gator Hide on here as well, just like that. Oh. So there you have it. <laughs> We're done.